This is Friday. It's September the 16th. My joy to come to you with today's Heart of a Shepherd devotional, the title, Eyewitness Accounts of Christ Resurrection. Our scripture reading, Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 24. By the way, we are completing our study of both Mark and the Gospel of Luke today. Well, allow me to begin with a point of introduction, picking up our story and our study at the cross. Well, with the cry, it is finished, Jesus bowed his head, and we read in John 19 and verse 30, and he gave up the ghost. Now, soldiers were ordered to hasten the deaths of those that were on the crosses, and they broke the legs of the thieves to speed along their demise. However, when they came to Jesus, they found he was already dead. And rather than breaking his leg, a soldier thrust his spear through Christ's side, piercing his heart. And thus was fulfilled Zechariah's prophecy in chapter 12 and verse 10 of Zechariah, They shall look upon me whom they pierced. Well, our story continues with the departure from Golgotha. Now, the chief priests, the Pharisees, and the scribes must have been the first to leave Golgotha. Like politicians, they had plotted Jesus' death, stirred the people to consent, cry, and crucify him. And yet those who lifted up their voices against the Lord went to their homes with hands stained with the blood of an innocent, sinless man spiritually blind. They observed the Passover that evening, yet not understanding that they had sacrificed the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. You might remember in Luke chapter 23, towards the end of that chapter, that Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the Sanhedrin, and we know that he had not consented to a council, that is to the Sanhedrin, and the deed of them, that is the decision to crucify Christ, but Joseph had gone to Pilate courageously, and according to Luke 23 and verse 52, that he had begged the body of Jesus. You and I can step into the scene and, and watch with love and tenderness as Joseph claims the lifeless body of Jesus Christ. In Luke 23 and verse 53, he wrapped the body in linen, and we know that he laid it in his own tomb. Well, with the tomb sealed and guards posted, the high priest and elders were confident the tomb was secure. They had done what they could to ensure that Jesus' followers would not steal his body and then turn around and claim that he had been raised from the dead as he had taught. Well, that brings us to Mark 16 and Luke chapter 24. And for you know that there was nothing that could keep Christ in the grave. We read, He is risen. Now, we've already considered the historical details that give pro, uh, numerous proofs concerning the bodily resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We studied that in Matthew 28. But Mark chapter 16 and Luke chapter 24 offer us a perspective of those authors. And we notice again the harmony of the greatest event in human history. In Mark 16 and verse 9, Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, and he appeared to Mary Magdalene. And then in, again we see in Luke chapter 24 that he appeared to two disciples who were walking on the road to Emmaus. And then in the same Mark 16 and verse 14, the Lord appeared to the eleven as they sat at meat, that is at supper, or as they sat down to eat. Now, the fact of Jesus' bodily resurrection from the dead, you understand that it forever changed the lives of the disciples. They were commissioned to preach the news of Christ's suffering for sin. In Luke 24, verse 26, they were to preach his name, a message of repentance and remission of sins. Verse 47, among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And of those things, Jesus commanded, Luke 24 and verse 48, ye are witnesses of these things. Over the blessing and promise that they, the disciples, would go in Christ's power and authority. We read in Luke 24 and verse 50 and 51 that Jesus ascended to heaven. 
Now the hearts of the disciples were filled with joy, and we read that they worshipped him and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God in Luke uh, in Luke 24 and verse 53. And you know, with the exception of John, who was exiled according to Revelation chapter 1, on the Isle of Patmos, each of the other disciples faced a martyr's death. And yet their tongues could not be silenced. Each died giving testimony that they served a risen Savior. Uh, Closing thoughts for today's devotion. Christ's resurrection was the pinnacle moment in God's redemptive plan. Jesus was crucified, died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day was raised from the dead, even as he had foretold. Christ's sacrificial death paid the penalty of sin in full, and his resurrection promises hope of eternal life to all who believe. Well, I need to close with the Apostle John's eyewitness testimony for we read in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe in the name of the Son of God. Know, understand, be confident in eternal life. What a wonderful promise that is for all of us who were born into this world sinners, understanding that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I ask you with the closing question, is he your Savior? If he is not, will you not receive him? God bless you. Thank you for continuing to join me with Heart of a Shepherd. Bye-bye.